Hello everyone. Welcome to the Yak River Railroad uh, layout tour. Um, my name is Kevin and uh, this is my first video where I do any narration and talking of any sort. So if I stumble, uh, please bear with me and uh, hopefully I can get this through this painlessly. So the name uh, Yak River comes from an area in Northwest Montana, notably called the Yak. There's a Yak River up there and it's beautiful probably not quite this rugged but what the heck it's a model railroading right so without further ado i'll start where trains come up out of staging from this tunnel portal and this by chance was the same tunnel portal that was in one of my first videos that i put on youtube and it progresses up that grade following the river to that tunnel portal and enters underneath the opposite side of the peninsula just travels underneath the scenery it's totally a tunnel and it will come out it'll come out here after exiting or entering depending which way you're going uh the tunnel outside of it is this stone arch bridge that i've done uh at the request of my wife she really likes stone arch bridges and then these are all done out of sculpt mold um, it's blended right in with the surrounding scenery. Uh, and I basically use a cardboard lattice lace and then, you know, paper towels or newspaper, or whatever, under over the top of that with hydrocal and then basically pile on the sculpt mold. So anyway, the main line continues across that bridge and through this tunnel, which is relatively short. <laughs> over the top of that hill. I'm going to be doing some scenery work up there. In fact, this whole side of the layout is going to get some tune-up. Not a complete rebuild, but some tuning up. This is kind of the grove of woods, and some of my shots have been there. Trains then cross this uh, Central Valley Truss. I've had this layout bridge on more than one layout, <clears throat> and uh, it's it's been tough, and it's been a good one. I, I like that design. And of course, the classic water tower. Gotta have those if you're gonna run any steam engines. And then, Hobo Camp. Featured this in a few videos. <clears throat> what the life of a hobo. And I just think it's fascinating to watch those guys on YouTube. You know, they're really out there. You know, what a life. That's just, it's crazy. Crazy that they can still do that after all the stuff that's gone on. Anyway, that also leads to Hogo, Hobo Camp Spur. It's a logging transfer, loading, you know, transferring from trucks to train. And the crane, I've had that since I was a kid. It's been modified a lot, different chassis underneath. It's been stationary. <clears throat> the bucket, that was probably one of my first things I made out of plastic when I was pretty young. And, I don't know, it's not very prototypical, but it gets the point across, and I just don't have the heart to retire it quite yet. But, so I'll probably do some detailing on it and make it look a little more up, up to date. Anyway, so that tunnel portal there, basically the main line starts up another grade up to the next level, which is the uh, junction yard. And I'll take you around the corner there to that. So, this is where coming up from the canyon, yeah, the enter into this trench. And this trench wasn't really what I had in mind. It's kind of a result of poor planning, but it's working now. And I'll I'll figure out exactly how I'm going to finish up the scenery there. Maybe I'll talk about it in my another video, but yeah, a little bit of action over that way. So anyway, out of that trench, the main line follows the wall, splits into this siding, which is used for passing trains. And sometimes it's just, you know, it's not necessarily a passing siding, but it works as one. I generally operate alone, so getting two trains to pass is sometimes more than I want to deal with. But for videos, it's worth doing. 
Anyway, the main line continues on around the corner here and it crosses this diamond and this crosses the Milwaukee Road. All other trackage is basically joint Great Northern and Yak River. And it continues on down, the main line continues on down past the shops. And yeah, I did a, this brick wall was kind of an interesting experiment. I actually videoed it to do it as a tutorial. And I've done a similar type of thing, so I kind of knew what I was doing, but it's a unconventional technique on how to do that rock wall. And uh, I'll be showing that video soon. Anyway, main line comes down here and goes across this grade crossing and into this tunnel, which all this area has basically been recently rebuilt and refinished. That tunnel portal is going to get a treatment. Right now it's just painted uh, poplar lumber. But there's a lift out there. You can probably see the outlines of it. That way I can get back in there and I'm going to do a bunch of repainting of the trees back there. I'm going to make them look more like that thick forest like on the other side, which I'll do another shot that way so you can see what's going to happen there. So anyway the shop area this will be in a basically an older roundhouse area and i'm not sure if i'm just going to leave a foundation like it's there now they're just outdoor storage or if i'll build a roundhouse if i do it'll probably be like a three maybe four stall roundhouse and we have the walther's 90 foot turntable um it's a growler and pretty noisy i've got another kit and i'm going to do a rebuild of it and see if i can make it a little quieter but um, all in all, this tear turntable actually works fairly well. So I'm not too unhappy with it. Anyway, back to the shops. I have to build some fuel racks yet before these locomotives get too thirsty. That's coming. Storage track for maintenance way back there. And then, I don't know if this is really be called the front of the shop or whatever, the business end anyway, but I'm gonna put some windows in this corner they come with this kit and I just got to cut them in, retro them in. I think I need them so I can see where the locomotives are in that stall so I don't keep bumping bumping the ends and you know how that goes. So that's how that goes that way. This is the yard throat, the west entrance. And then you can see that diverging turn out there and then this weedy covered siding is basically a short yard lead drill track if you want to call it that. It's not real long, but it it, sir, it it works. Let's see, let the switch up there. So the yard diverges into four tracks, but realistic, realistically, it's only three tracks. That track right here is more or less the interchain and change and run around for the Milwaukee Road. The other three tracks, two center ones are storage. The outside track right here in front of us is basically run around or temporary storage. This area right here in front is eventually going to get an old stockyard. It looks like it's not been used in years. But I'll be also, also able to make it so I can use it for videos, I guess. Anyway. Go back to the depot. And... One of the things, like I mentioned, I like weedy sidings and abandoned track. So this is in the asphalt. And these two buildings here are basically transloading type businesses, not really industries, but they're places to switch anyway. And into the spur, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here at the end yet, but we'll figure that out. And back to the trench, and then that second track through that trench comes out here, and this is on the way to the plant. And I say the plant because I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet. Still got a lot of time for total decision. And it'll have a lot to do with logs and lumber and wood. So these scenes people might recognize. There's another crane that I built eons ago, and probably just need to update it a little bit. It's rides on rails back and forth so this plant back here these flats are actually a uh, walther's uh 
roundhouse kit, three-stall modern roundhouse. It's way too big for my layout, so I'm going to cut it up and keep bashing it into the plant, use the parts, and I'll do a little research on plumbing and how the things are laid out, but I'm not really trying to lay plant real accurately. I'm just trying to get the point across. It's not my interest. My interest is mostly how a railroad may or may not operate in a setting like this. So that's basically an overview of the layout itself. I'll slow down here a little bit. And I'll get back this way. Like I say, the trees in that over corner, they're gonna be look painted more like this, a little more dense. And remember back to this other tunnel portal down here. That drops down into a about a maybe one and three quarter helix. And into the lower level staging, which wraps around and basically goes that way and then comes out of that original tunnel portal that I showed. The other staging that I have on the layout, which was an afterthought, is this Milwaukee Road staging. It ends right here for now, but eventually I'm going to cut that bookshelf down and extend it. I need more. I need, need more track. So I've got to figure that out and find the time to do it. Anyway, that's where the Milwaukee came in over there. Back behind everything. And if anybody knows, been around the Milwaukee Road back in the latter years, all that track's going to look like this. It's going to have that Lee look to it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this layout tour. And like, like I guess everybody says, uh, like and subscribe if you would. That'd be great. I really appreciate the people that have subscribed so far. And I look forward to doing a few more videos in the future. Um, got a few tricks up my sleeve that I've learned over the years doing this. And need to pass them on somehow or another. Um, a lot of them are just expanded upon ideas that other people have done over the years. And some are my own and original. And some are kind of... Maybe you raise your eyebrows a little bit, but, but usually they work. So, anyway, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.